Welcome to today's session on model-based testing with Squish. My name is Alexey Popovich, and I'm a software engineer at Qt Quality Assurance in Hamburg, Germany, where we develop tools for automated testing. In this video, we are going to explore model-based testing. First up, we'll learn a bit about the general concept of model-based testing, what it is, and why you shouldn't sleep on it. Later on, we will see an example of the practical implementation of model-based testing in Squish, our test automation tool of choice. Model-based testing is an approach based on using models to guide the testing process. These models are abstract representations of systems' desired behavior. Unlike traditional testing, which often involves scrutinizing intricate and implementation-dependent details, model-based testing takes a more general approach. Assume we have a model of our application represented by this diagram. It may be a state chart where the boxes represent states uh, the application is in, and the arrows represent the transitions between these states. Or it may be, for example, an activity diagram or some other type of model. In any case, the idea is that we take this model and create or generate test cases. The abstraction allows us to select only meaningful test cases which cover exactly what we need. The concept of abstraction is a very important one in model-based testing. In general, models used both for software development and testing involve various levels of abstraction. At the highest level, we have models providing a broad overview of a system's behavior without getting into specifics. This may include use case diagrams and behavior models. As we move down, we encounter models capturing more specific aspects, such as state transitions represented by state diagrams or interactions, which sequence diagrams might represent. At the lowest levels of abstraction, we get highly specific models where individual states or interactions are broken down into smaller, more nuanced and possibly even implementation-dependent details. Choosing the right abstraction level is critical for effective model-based testing. It ensures that model-based testing balances comprehensiveness, efficiency and relevance. It empowers testers to focus on what truly matters for effective testing. As previously discussed, there are various models available for model-based testing we will focus on a simplified version of an activity diagram. We want our model to express which actions, or as we call it, steps, can be performed in the application and in what order. So, which step has to precede other steps or which steps may follow a different step. When starting the application in this example, we can only do A. From there, we can do C or B. Both C and B may be followed by D, and so on. All this is captured by the diagram on the left, where we represent steps by boxes and the connections between steps by arrows. Now that we have our model, each path through the diagram can be considered as, as a possible test scenario. We will pay special attention to critical paths, so loops or alternative flows. The idea is to verify that it is actually possible to execute the steps in a given order and to check if the application behaves correctly during the execution. Before I show you how this can work in practice, let me first introduce you to Squish. Squish is a professional automated testing framework for graphical user interface applications. It has a wide support for different platforms and frameworks, such as the Qt framework, Java, Windows, and Web. The tests can be written in several real-world scripting languages like Python, JavaScript, or Ruby. The scripts can be recorded and played back, and even distributed and executed in batches. Let's see how we can create a model and test cases for it in Squish. Here we are on my desktop where I have an application running. Uh, it's an application that would normally run on a screen of a coffee machine. It lets us choose a beverage, set the amount of milk and sugar in it, and then continue with the brewing process. We have already prepared a basic model of this application in the Squish IDE. So let's grab our coffee and go have a look. Just to remind you, the boxes here in the model represent the so-called steps or actions that can be performed on the application. We have steps representing choosing the beverage, setting the amount of sugar and milk, and the rest of the brewing process. We also have one empty step that helps declutter the model. We have two test cases now. One is a simple path through the model that brews an espresso. So you can see that it goes through the step of clicking on espresso and the rest of the brewing process. So let's try and run this test case. Now Squish will take over and it controls the application now. And as you can see, it went through the steps and brewed an espresso. We have a second test case that is a bit more complicated and it adds sugar and milk to a latte. So 
Let's try running that as well. And we can see that it does add milk and sugar and it prepares a latte. You might be wondering now, where is the magic? How is the test case actually interacting with the application? And if we go back to the model, we can actually see that each step has a so-called implementation attached to it. Let's go have a look at what it is actually. And as we can see, it's just a Python uh, script where we have different functions and each of them is attached to a step. And these functions get run uh, when the test case arrives at that particular step. So as an example, here is a step um, click on Macchiato and what it does is it performs a mouse click on an object that is represented by the name uh, Macchiato button. We also have a visual verification point here. You might have noticed that there is one functionality missing in the model because in the application we were also able to go back from um, clicking on brew me a cup and we would be able to choose a different beverage then. So let's try and add that step. For that we switch to add the add steps mode and we click anywhere in the model and add a new step. Let's call it go back. Now we can connect it to the rest of the steps by using the connect steps mode. And we can do this and connect it back to the auxiliary empty step. And now we need to add the implementation that actually performs the click. For that, we can click here on generate all missing step implementations, which as the name suggests, generates the step implementations for steps that don't have one yet. So Squish automatically generated a function here that we can now modify so that it actually performs the click on the back button. We remove the placeholder here. So let's add a mouse click now. This is the Squish API that allows us to interact with an application. Because the application is animated, let's add a short snooze as well to make sure that the step is performed as a whole before continuing with other steps. To test that implementation, let's now create a new test case. Let's name it test go back. Now we can start adding steps from the initial entry point step to where we want the test case to end. We need to add the empty step and then we can choose a beverage. Click on brew me a cup. But then we realized that we actually wanted a different beverage. So we want to click on the back button. We end up again on the home screen and then we can choose something different. Let's go with latte. And then let it uh, continue with the brewing process. Let's see how this test case works now. So as we have just seen, it went back to the main menu and selected a latte instead of the espresso. Let's now see what happens when there is an error in the test case. For that, let's try and modify the uh, continue step so that it tries to click on the wrong button. We can go to the implementation through here, click on go to step implementation, and we get to the function that represents the implementation of the step. Right now, it clicks on the continue button, but to artificially create a, an error here, let's go with the brew button. Now if we try running, for instance, the brew espresso test case, we will see that Squish will not be able to find the right button and it will error out. 
If we now switch back to the view of the test case, we can see that the last run ended up in an error in the continuous step. The rest of the steps were successful, so uh, they are colored green. We can also see these results in the test results menu. And as we can see, there was an error in the click on continue step because the brew button was not available to, to be clicked on. In summary, model-based testing offers a strategic approach, better communication and early defect detection, making it a powerful tool set for test engineers seeking systematic and organized testing methods. Thank you for joining me today. If you want to learn more about Squish, automated testing or software quality assurance in general, please make sure to check out our YouTube channel, Cute Quality Assurance, where we have plenty of tutorials, free webinars and best practices videos for you to watch. If you want to try out Squish yourself, visit Qt.io, where we have a fully supported free trial version for you. You can find all the relevant links in the video's description. Thank you all for watching.